Hello, my name is Alan Lawrence, and this is the first of what I hope to be many before and after videos using Lightroom, Photoshop, and Nick software plugins, where I'll be doing images sent to people from the Seattle Photography Club uh, and showing my process for post producing. And most of these images I will have never seen until I actually start um, cleaning them up. So the first image was sent in by Chris Grady, and um, he took this, I believe, up at Whidbey Island over the weekend using, if we look at the XF data over here on the right-hand side, he was taking this uh, with his Nikon D4 at ISO 1000 and a 58 millimeter focal length. First thing I see right off the bat, if I hit my space bar and zoom in, you can see his sensor was extremely dirty when he took this. Um, we've got tons and tons of sensor spots. There's a bird that looks like a sensor spot. So the first thing I need to do is zoom in on this image and uh, use the spot removal key. Uh, uh, spot removal tool, excuse me, to um, start removing these sensors spots and anything else that I don't really want. Now I always do this first because it's extremely resource heavy on your computer and it will definitely speed things up if you do this um, very at the, as the very beginning of your processing. If you hit the space bar and hold it you can move your image around and I'm just going to continue to go through and remove all these spots. Now, if I close this out now um, and go zoom out, I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me remove all these spots. So I've already done that. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to hit my spot removal tool again. I'm going to hit the H key and you can see all these spots all over the place that I've already removed so you don't have to watch me do that. I'm going to hit my H key again to, to hide that. Next thing I want to do is I want to crop this image and I kind of like it cropped to about here. I think that gives it a nice cropping and I just see that the horizon is also tilted a little bit to the to the right so I'm going to use my angle straightening tool in the crop tool. I'm going to draw it across the horizon in the back and straighten it out just a little bit. There, that looks a lot better. Now, the next thing I want to do is, I kind of like the sky, but I'm going to come down here and I'm going to enable my profile correction in the lens correction panel, and that's going to take out a little bit of the distortion from his uh, 28 to 300 lens that was being used. And um, if we go back here to the original, no, nope, don't want to do that. You can see I took out this ball over here, took out some of these spots, took out the bird uh, that was flying up here, if you can see that, and uh, got rid of all the other spots. Then I cropped it. So now we're here. Next thing I'm going to do is go to the basic panel here and I'm going to just lower the exposure just a bit to give it a little bit of maybe a half a stop. And I'm going to bring up my shadow slider now and that's going to brighten it back up. But see if we bring it up more, see what it does. It gives me some definition here to these posts that I kind of like and then I'm going to increase my blacks just a tad to bring it back down again so we'll take that down to about minus 19. Now I've got some definition and light on these poles and um, my sky is looking pretty good. I'm going to add some clarity and that's going to give me some tonal contrast down here in the water and I'm definitely going to add a little saturation here get a little bit more blue and let's see if we take the highlights down that's going to give some more definition in the sky too and what we want to watch out for is we don't want to make the bottoms of the clouds too dark because then it's going to look kind of fake now I kind of like the way that looks already 
Um, I think I'm going to take this into Photoshop now. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to edit and I'm going to take it into CS5. I'm sorry, CS6. Okay, here we are in Photoshop CS6 now, and the next thing I want to do is I'm going to zoom in, and I want to get rid of some of this stuff in the background. It's a little bit distracting, and I can easily do that with the clone stamp tool. Make sure my opacity is set at 100. I'm going to use a medium brush, halfway between, uh, at 50% hardness, and I'm just going to Take my brush down, take the size down a little bit, and I'm going to sample, I like this area here, so I'm going to sample right there, and I'm just going to bring this over a bit, there we go, and take out some of these buildings that are a little bit distracting, and you won't really notice. So now if we sample here again, line up the shore here. And it doesn't have to be precise because it's kind of it's way in the background. So I'm going to sample over here on the left hand side now. I'm just going to kind of tap and remove some of these bright spots here. It's just a little distracting. And I think we'll get rid of this building right here. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to hold down my space bar, see if there's anything else I want to get rid of. And I think we'll just clean this up a little bit here and just add some trees, make it a little cleaner. Get rid of this. And there's a spot that I missed over before, so I'm going to clean that up just a little bit here. And we'll sample over here and kind of take out some of these little buildings. I might leave that boat in there now. So we zoom back out and that looks a little bit better. Let me get rid of this bright spot. So I'm going to come back over here to my clone stamp tool. I'm going to sample in the trees. I'm just going to get rid of that bright house right there. That looks better. Now I've also got Nick software on here and I think what I'm going to do is I actually like the idea of turning this into a black and white. So let's take it over to Nick. Now, I can uh, take this into SilverFX Pro from Photoshop. And what that's going to do, it's going to create a new layer for me. Um, and all the effects will be in that layer. So I can go back and change uh, back to color if I want to. But if you don't have Photoshop, then all you've got to do is save it from this point and then come back into Lightroom and from here we can right click edit in and edit in Silver Effects Pro. Now if you don't see Silver Effects Pro in your drop down file here then go to my blog and um, earlier this week I explained how to add this. So we're going to hit Silver Effects Pro 2 and I'm going to get a pop-up window that asks whether I want to edit with my Lightroom adjustments, the original or a copy. I want to do it with my Lightroom adjustments so that I maintain my spot removal and etc. Okay, and now I've got all my presets over here on the left and you can just kind of go down and see which one you like the best. Personally, I think uh, this full dynamic range looks really nice, and I'm going to adjust that a bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a control point up here in the sky and just bring that brightness down just a tad to give it a little bit more of uh, a darker look. I'm going to hit my Alt key and drag that over and hit my Alt key again, and that's going to 
give me a very dramatic sky. I'm going to take all three of those over control points. I'm going to highlight all three and I'm going to connect them. So now I can control them if it's a little bit much, which I think it is, control them with one control point here. All right, and then I'm going to uh, come down and I'm going to add and see if I like any of these filters. And I like the effect of the green. So I'm going to save that. It's going to bring it right back into Lightroom. And um, next thing I want to do is I think I'd like to add a little bit of fog here. And I can do that by right clicking, edit in, and just take it over to Color Effects Pro. And while that's opening, There it is. I'm going to come over here to graduated fog and I'm just going to give it a little bit of fog in the foreground. There's the before and after. It's just, it's really slight. And you can come over here and play with the fog methods. And I think I like number two. So I come up here to compare. There's before, after. Just really slight, subtle change. I'm going to hit save. That's going to take it back into Lightroom. And there is my final image. So that's it for today's video on before and after. Here um, is the before. And here is the after. I'm going to hit C to compare. I'm going to hit Shift Tab to give you the window. So we went from this to this. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll have another one in two weeks.